Joy has another question. Uh, my other question is, can you show the difference with a regular bow, profound bow, and a genuflection when they should be used? Thanks so much. Yes, man, I need to think through all this real quick. Um, good question. Uh, okay, so the uh, regular bow, or it's called a bow of the head, is done with the head and the shoulders. Um, or it can be done with the shoulders as well, right? Because if you really bow your head all the way, it kind of begins to affect your shoulders some. But more or less, there's no bowing from the, there's no, there's no flexing at the hips. That, those, those stay straight. And so a bow of the head is used, um, it is used whenever you uh, say the name of Jesus or of Mary, or you have the Trinitarian taxis is what it's called, the, the Trinitarian um, you know, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So like at the glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, bow your head at that time. Other times that the head is bowed, um, I think, I can't think of any other. I'm sure there are a few other moments. Um, oh, the, whatever the saint of the day, whenever that saint's name is said, and then also the patronal saint of the church that you're in. So, um, for example, if you're at um, St. Mary's, which name, well, that's not a good example, it's Mary, you do anyways. If you're at whatever, St. Saint, Peter and Paul, then whenever you hear in the Eucharistic prayer, Peter and Paul, you bow your head for uh, each of those names. Um, yeah, there might be a couple other little times, but um, for the bow of the head, the profound bow is used when you are entering the sanctuary if the blessed sacrament is not reserved in the tabernacle inside of the sanctuary so if the tabernacle is somewhere else or for some reason the tabernacle is empty then when you enter or leave the, the sanctuary you do a profound bow that's a bow from the hips so you actually flex at the hips as opposed to at the neck and shoulders um, then you also do a profound bow to the altar during the liturgy so whenever you pass uh in front of or behind the altar, you bow to the altar um, with a profound bow. At the words, uh, in um, by the power of the Holy Spirit was conceived of the Virgin Mary and became man. Um, those words uh, in the creed at that time, we profoundly bow. Um, and then uh, concelebrants, when they are concelebrating mass, they do a profound bow when the celebrant genuflex after the consecrations or the elevations. Um, and then the, the laity can do a, should do a profound bow uh, prior to receiving the Eucharist unless they receive on the knees. Um, and I'm trying to think when else is a profound bow used. I think that's it for a profound bow. Um, <clears throat> and then a genuflection is, uh, it's hard to show in, <laughs> in the camera frame. Uh, a genuflection is when the right knee is dropped all the way to the floor. And oftentimes in Anglo-Catholic culture, that includes making the sign of the cross. However, uh, it doesn't necessarily include making the sign of the cross. You can make the sign of the cross, but it's not something that you have to do in a genuflection. It's actually just about the bending the knee so that the right knee goes down to the floor. Um, and if you want to get really, really picky about it, uh, a genuflection is not a reverse lunge. So a lunge, you move uh, one foot, so essentially... For a lunge, one foot goes way forward and then both kind of go down and your knee is significantly behind your foot. For a genuflection, actually, it should be that the knee just drops down straight. Um, and so your knee hits the ground actually kind of next to your foot. Um, and uh, then you use the genuflection um, whenever you enter into the sanctuary in if the blessed sacrament is reserved 
in the tabernacle in the sanctuary. Whenever you leave the sanctuary, if the Blessed Sacrament is reserved in the tabernacle in the sanctuary, whenever you cross in front of the tabernacle uh, for any reason, except during mass, during well, during the liturgy, uh, during the liturgy, you always do a bow towards the altar. And so if the altar and the tabernacle are on the same axis, you actually just bow to the tabernacle. Or sorry, you bow to the, the altar. Um, and then also whenever you approach the tabernacle. And so people say you, you bow when you go before, whenever you go into the pews, right? That's kind of the, the rule of thumb that people know, um, but that's not actually technically a rule. It's whenever you approach the tabernacle. So whenever you get the closest to the tabernacle that you will be, that's when you genuflect. Um, and so people do it as they're getting into the pews because that's usually the closest that you're going to come to the tabernacle. Um, and it's hard to genuflect in the pews. And so you, you just genuflect there in the aisle and then you go into the pew. Um, also you genuflect during the liturgy, uh, you know, the priest has several times when he genuflects, uh, during the mass, but you, you also genuflect at the words, um, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I was born of the Virgin Mary and became man during the creed, um, when, uh, on two feast days on Christmas and on the feast of the Annunciation, uh, because at those times we're really celebrating in a particular way, God becoming man. Um, and I think those are all the times. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or if there was a particular situation that you're wondering, you know, what, how do I do this or what do I do for that? Mm -hmm.